Good morning, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. We thank you for joining together, yes, again, as the family of God, as we call upon the name of our Lord in this last chapel of the 2019-2020 year. What a year it's been. Wow. What a consistent God we have. And that's why we call upon his name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with our morning prayer as Luther wrote it, and we pray that together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. This year's theme verse comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Listen in. I know you know it well. We've said it quite a bit. It says, be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always. I think we have a song about that. I love singing about I've got the joy. Here we go. I've got the joy. 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 I've got the joy. 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 I've got the joy. Joy, joy, joy. joy. one of my favorite songs to be able just to have that joy in our heart and that love, that peace, that light of Jesus Christ, him being the light of the world. We're going to continue on being able just to continue to push into our verses for the year, but especially for this last chapel. Could you say it with me again? It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16, 17, and 18. That last part, we're not going to say all, uh, all, the, all the words, but it's just going to say these three little phrases. It says, rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always, always consistent. And being able to say, we've been kind of altered that, haven't we? Always, well, we haven't always been experiencing the things that we've experiencing lately in these last two months. And so, does everything change? What's always? It says, rejoice always. Remember with me real quickly that in this pandemic, that there was still the scriptures as we walk forward in chapel, but also in services on Sunday, I mean to say there was still a Messiah that rode on a donkey into Jerusalem. That always and did truly happen. Jesus went to the cross. Jesus was buried in a tomb, but he rose three days later. Jesus ascended into the heavens just last week as we talked about. And Jesus said to his disciples, I am with you always to the very end. Always, always, he's with us. Jesus is the constant. 
And he said, you know what, I'm going to also send you someone that's going to be a counselor and a constant in your life so you can rejoice always. His name is the Holy Spirit, and he delivered that. Stay tuned. Come and join us on Sunday morning as we celebrate Pentecost, the great birth of the church as we see it, with the power of the Holy Spirit being constant in our lives. If you look back over these last two months, after this last fourth quarter, almost three months as we get to push back, we get to see something that has changed variably always of being able to look like over and over again, we don't know what's coming the next day or the next week. What's the lessons going to be? How are we going to get this done? We have all these questions, but we should never be able to question that we can always, always rejoice that God is with us and he's shaping us for our future, for our days ahead. We got to remember that we still celebrated discipleship awards. As we get to see here, as we still celebrated baptismal celebrations, we're going to be celebrating awards right after this. We've celebrated through singing. And boy, what a great next song. We, singing just brings us a lot of joy. So I say that we go into our next song with all the joy in our hearts and being able to rejoice always. Some versions of our same theme verse, sometimes it says, be joyful always, sometimes it's rejoice always, so let's rejoice. Here we go. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Oh, can we put two claps right there? There we go. Got it. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again. awesome music moment for a music teacher because we can sing this in two parts. Are you ready? Sure. I will start. Here I go. You got the right side and I got the left side? Or the left and then the right, depending on if you're sitting there. We'll see. <laughs> if you want to start with me, you'll start singing or you can join in with Pastor for the second half. So and if you we... have multiple people in your living room right now, split aside the couches, yes. right? Go like two and two this or one and dream. one and yes. being able to do this round in your house and if you're just by yourself, you can go to one spot and then to the other spot. You can I, go love back yeah. I love Exercise. it. I love it. Exercise. All right, here we go. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice. There's a lot of joy in that song, a lot of rejoicing in that song. That's uh, maybe you get the theme of the year once again, that uh, we are joyfully in Jesus. And that's the big picture of it, being able to say our joy comes solely from Jesus into our lives so we continue to go. And into our next phrase of our, our theme verse, right, of being able to say we uh, rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances. Did I get that mixed up? Ah, we're kind of mixed up anyways. Give thanks in all circumstances. Can we give thanks in the circumstance? Giving thanks so. in all circumstances, that's difficult. The circumstances we were in for this year of teaching changed overnight. Just like that, we asked our students to learn in a whole new way. Just like that, we asked our teachers to teach in an exciting but challenging new way. And just like that, we ask parents who are trying to work, many of them, to support and help their kids. But yet, at the same time, in those circumstances, we found ways to celebrate. Think about this. Not one single student, not one pastor, was (laughs) sent to my office or Mr. Potter's office for discipline reasons. I think that's pretty good. We can celebrate that. In the whole fourth quarter? The whole fourth quarter, not one. Not That's amazing. Give thanks for that. Not (laughs) one, not one student was tardy this entire fourth quarter. Not one. They weren't late at all. They weren't late at all. 
And wow. here's the most exciting part. I cannot believe that kids, students, kept on learning. They kept on learning through distance learning this entire fourth quarter. Hard to believe, isn't it? That's giving thanks in all circumstances. All circumstances. We've been, we've been challenged. We've, we've had some circumstances thrown at us. But keeping the constant that we are living in Jesus and being able to just see his joy, see his celebrations. We had those joys. Even amongst this pandemic, we had families that were blessed with the gift of life. We saw the Harfman family welcome in a new little baby boy. We, we, we saw the Kubowitz family, Pastor Andrew and his wife, uh, being able to welcome in a new baby girl. And also the Shigaya family that welcomed in a brand new baby boy. In and amongst life tough circumstances, God still provides his good and blessed, blessed things. The life of children, even amongst, yes, diseases, sickness, sin, and dying, God continues to provide his ways of life. I know we mix it up a little bit. It's supposed to be the phrases, right? It's supposed to be rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. But we mix it up for you a little bit there, putting give thanks uh, in all circumstances second. Because we have a special time that we have here today, and that is to pray continually. We love at the end of our chapel, at the end of our, our year, that last chapel that we have together, we love to pray over our students we love to pray over our teachers. We love to pray over our families. Especially, we're praying this day for our eighth graders. As the leaders of our school, as this in, in this year, send and take, off, take into that next step of their journey. And so, as we do that, we pray continually. That's where we pray where we are. And before we get into this video of the eighth graders, let's stand all together and pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's check out these eighth graders and celebrate who God has made them to be, but where God is sending them as well as we continue to pray over them.
keep praying always give your thanks through everything always rejoice always keep praying always give your thanks through video. You know, at the beginning of the year, I asked you eighth graders to stand up, and I had all the students and teachers looking at you, and we said something about you being leaders of the school. So as principal, I want to thank you. I want to thank you eighth graders for being such a wonderful class and leading this student body. So what we do now is we say a prayer called a sending prayer. And, and that sending prayer is intended for you eighth graders because we're going to ask you to go out, to go out in high school and make a difference like you made here. And we're also going to pray for all of our students and families as we begin this summer. So if you'll join me in prayer. Lord God, what a year it's been. What an incredible year of ups and downs, but yet here we are. We are ready to go forth. So Lord, I just thank you for these students, these teachers and what they've been able to do. Lord, and as they go forward, as they go out, as they go out into the community, help them to feel your love and to share your love and make a difference. 
And Lord, we especially pray for a wonderful, amazing eighth grade class who has been through so much. And now, Lord, they're off. They're going off to high school. And we pray, Lord, that they continue to shine for you in high school and to make a difference. So we send them. We send them out into the world, into the high schools that they're going to. Be with them. Walk with them. Help them to know and feel and experience your love and to share it with others. Amen. As you are sent out, we're sent out in a way that I, we pray that the most important thing that you've learned here at St. Paul is your confession, is your faith statement. And so I'd ask that everybody please stand as we can participate in this together as the body of Christ, as we read or actually say these words together in the Apostles' Creed. It says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen says, truly, truly, this is so. This is certainly true. I pray that as you've grown as disciples here at St. Paul Lutheran Church and School, yes, maybe in just this year, but all these years coming up to this point in your life, that you believe in God the Father as your creator, God the Son as your redeemer and savior, God the Holy Spirit who is always, always with you, urging you on, pushing you on, sending you on to do the work of Christ. We learned a lot about living in Christ's joy in this school year, and I'm so excited we get to spread that joy and live in that joy into our summer life also. Amen. I can't wait to hear about how God is working in your life and what's next in your journey. So let us <laughs> sing our joy song. Starts with a little snap back and forth. Here we go. Joy, 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 all that joy. Okay. I think you're really good at the jumping, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. I'm just that way. I'll do the, the, choose your favorite part. Ready? Joy, 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 oh, that joy, 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 There is so much joy in Jesus, and we thank God that we can be joy fully in Jesus. We know that because of Jesus, we can rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Right after this chapel, the awards are coming to you really quickly, so don't go too far. Awards are coming right after this chapel. Blessings to you. Go in peace and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Yeah!